Hi, this is audio file short number six, Picking Speakers, How to Audition Speakers. I know, it seems crazy. Why would you ever need to hear from anyone how to audition a speaker? After all, don't you just need to listen to it and see if it sounds good, right? Like trying on a pair of shoes? In my experience, there's more to it than that, and I want to give you a couple of points about picking speakers. Two key points in this video. First, where to audition speakers, and second, how to audition speakers. Let's start with number one, where to audition speakers. Okay. So the first place you can audition speakers is at the dealer. Now there are typically um, dealers who will have the kinds of speakers that you'll be happy with, and there are a few things to watch out for if you go to a dealer. One is that the dealer's room and equipment is typically going to be very good, right? They're going to set up your speakers or the speakers you're going to audition with good equipment, good cables, good power, good amplifiers. This is going to give the speaker its best chance at sounding good. And hopefully also the, the room that the audition happens in is also a good one. All of these things will bring out the best in the speaker. But what if the dealer is using $10,000 of equipment and a really good room to audition the speaker for you? This might lead to a misleading impression if you're not going to spend that much on the surrounding equipment or if your room isn't as acoustically perfect as the dealer's. So the best compromise in this situation is to ask the dealer to set the speaker up with the kind of equipment that you're going to use, whether it's solid state or tubes, and around the price points you're probably going to spend. All of this is rough guesstimation, but you just want to avoid having, say, $10,000 worth of gear powering a $1,000 speaker, a uh, pair of speakers. The other place you could audition speakers is at your home. There are more and more dealers, both large and small, and new and used, that will give in-home trials for speakers. You have to pay attention to the fine print about who pays for shipping and you know how long you're allowed to, to listen to them. But this is a great way to listen to speakers because all of the conditions by and large are kept stable. As long as of course you have equipment to, to power the speaker and sources to play it, it'll give you a pretty good sense of how that speaker is going to sound if you try it with your equipment in your home. When you're trying it at home, try to move the speaker to different positions, right? Move it off the wall, move it closer to the wall, move it wider, move it narrower. Change your listening position, come in closer, come in further away. There are a lot of things which can affect how a speaker sound. And the more you play with in your room, the more you can get a sense of what is the speaker going to be able to do. Measure how far your ears are from the right and left speaker when you're starting to audition because you want to make sure that there's a balance there. You want to make sure that you give the speakers a chance to lock that center image and give you a deep and wide sound stage. Auditioning speakers doesn't need to be a complicated thing to do. You just need to take it seriously. The second point to deal with is how to audition speakers. So whether you're at a dealer or you're at home, there are some additional things to do to make sure that you're getting a well-informed impression of speakers. Play familiar music is one thing. Play music that you know well where you anticipate cymbal crashes or bass thumps or the texture of the voice, the range and energy of the music. This will help you judge different speakers with at least comparable criteria. Search out the web. You'll find there are lists out there about tonality, soundstage, dynamic range, and other important qualities to listen for. Listen with a checklist. Try to make your best judgment about how a speaker is doing for each of those elements. This is tricky because you don't want to have too much of your critical in mind engaged all the time. You also want to try to see how that speaker sounds when you're relaxing. So you might also listen to the speaker and, I don't know, doodle on a page, um, listen with partial attention as well as full, of it, full attention. The last thing to point out is quick switching and longer listens. Uh, one of the things that we know about human auditory memory is it's notoriously short. So you want to choose a piece of music where there's a lot happening in, say, the first 30 seconds to a minute, because you want to listen to that passage over and over again. So you get to know it well, and you can compare different speakers with a rather narrow cut of music. And that way, your memory is helped. Mm -hmm. 
with short listening sessions of short clips, uh, listener fatigue can set in and boredom can set in. So you might also have a few cuts where you listen for a while, relax into it, and you know just see if you groove with the speakers. That's also a good technique. So you want to do both quick switch and longer listens. You want to be critical and you also want to be zen. Taking a break, doing it again the next day is crucial to this process. You don't want to try to make a judgment all at once. Let it go to the next day if you're getting tired. And finally, remember that a speaker that comes across in a bright and captivating way at first might be deceiving you, right? That's the kind of speaker which can be fatiguing in the longer run. First impressions can deceive, so live with the speaker for a while. So in conclusion, the speaker is probably the most influential piece of gear that you can own. And taking the time to try out different speakers for as long as possible with all of the different elements I mentioned will help you make a well-informed and, uh, and sound judgment about speakers.